Hello everyone and welcome to the first uh, installment of the What We Do channel. Today I'm going to show you how we take a bottle of uh, white wine, that's my own Chardonnay, and we t use a soda stream uh, machine and I'm going to turn this into sparkling wine. Now you may have seen YouTube videos where people make a huge mess doing this. It definitely is different than making fizzy water. Sparkling wine has to, you forget the instructions that come with the machine for making fizzy water. It's a much slower process. We're going to take our time. What we have to remember is that this is a three-way valve in here. All the way down puts pressure in. Hold this into the middle and the valve shuts off. Nothing goes in or out. When you go up to the top, you release pressure. So I've already poured a bottle of Chardonnay into this soda stream container. Let's attach that. Now, I'm not just going to ream on this. I'm going to add a little bit. Um, if you do this wrong, there'll be a big mess everywhere. Even the first couple of times we tried, we needed a towel. Don't do this on any floor you could ruin or anything. It takes some practice. And I suggest practicing with uh, water until you really understand how the valves in this machine work. OK, so let's start. I'm going to add some pressure. And then I'm just going to ease back to the middle. Can you see here that it's in, not all the way up? If I went all the way up, that pressure would release. OK, so I'm going to add some more. It's very important to forget about these lights that come on and tell you how, um, if the water's done or not, or what level you're at. You're just going to be looking at the wine itself. And eventually, it's going to go to a milky white color. And that's when we know we're pretty close to having the level of carbonation we want. We're a long way from that now. Things are settled, so I'm going to add some more. Okay. This could take about five minutes. I just want to make sure that if I were to keep adding pressure, foam would come pouring out of the top, leak all over the place. Okay, here we go again. Still nowhere near. But see how I'm holding the it holding it in neutral so that no pressure comes in and no pressure escapes. See this foam up here? I'm going to let that dissipate a little bit before I add more. Okay, let's add another burst. And then ease off. See, so notice these lights haven't even come on. We're not using those lights at all. Forget about those lights. I want that foam at top to disappear. I'm actually doing a Chardonnay today that I made. For mostly we're using um, a nice acidic grape that I make called Vidal, that grows well here in the Northeast. If generally for... Um, a sparkling wine, you want a nice uh, acidic sort of a grape variety, white grape variety. And that gives the zing that um, a, a fizzy wine needs. When they're actually growing wine for, um, say, champagne making or fine uh, sparkling wine in California, they'll, they'll either grow in a cool region where the grapes are acid naturally, or they'll actually harvest them early. Let's add some more. We're getting very close now. See, it's the, the milky white is there, but it dissipates quite fast. I'm probably going to add mm, another small burst. Maybe a little small, couple of small ones, being careful not to overdo it. You see, now that's a nice milky white, and it's staying there. So now I'm going to wait and let that... Wait until this, this milky white, it's billions of tiny little bubbles in there, and we're waiting for them to um, come up to the top and disappear. This is going to take a couple of minutes. This is not something that we're just trying for the first time. We've probably done this 75 times. We do it every weekend. It's great if you're a winemaker and you've got the wine to use. Yet making a, a, a fizzy wine, a, a sparkling type wine, the natural way, fermenting in the bottle or whatever, takes a long time and it's, it's a very specialized thing. See, it's beginning to slowly clear. So this is much easier. I'm going to wait now. You see the, how that's clearing there? That's the tiny bubbles rising to the top. So I'm going to let them all come up to the top. And once that happens, I'm going to start slowly releasing my pressure. I'm not going to, if you release all that pressure at once, but it's going to go everywhere. It's going to be a terrible mess. So now I'm at the point where I can start to release. I'm going to release a little, little bit of release, and then I'm going to back, go back to the middle, back to neutral again. See that foam starting to rise? You've got to be so careful. 
This is going very well. I think I can do another bit. Let's hold it there. Now I'm going to wait until this foam that's coming up, um, the bubbles will pop and it will disappear again. If you just keep going, that's going to come out the top. And it's going to make a mess on your nice hardwood floor and your wife will kill you. Ooh. See, this is why it's so important to make sure that you really know how to control this valve. That's why you want to practice with water. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend doing this. You might sue me if you make a mess. But once you get the hang of it, it I have never had a problem. The first couple of times I had a problem. See, even now that foam would come out. The pressure is really beginning to back off. As you, you come to the lower end where you're backing off the pressure, the bubbles start to dissipate, fa dissipate faster. And you can, I, this might be one last go. There, we're done. Now, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. What have we made? Let's think. Can you hear that? You see the nice bubbles rising in the glass? Pleasing aroma. Mmm, a good mousse in the mouth. I think we've made a good, excellent sparkling wine. Well, thank you very much for watching the What We Do channel and have a great day.